Adventuring is the Boy Scouts of America's high adventure program for young adults from 14 through 20 years of age. It is an action-oriented, co-educational program designed to develop citizenship, character, and fitness. Through the Venturing program, young men and women form a voluntary association with adults. Through that relationship, each volunteer adult leader influences the lives of its youth members belonging to the crew. As adult leaders in the Venturing program, you have a tremendous opportunity to enhance the lives of young people. But at the same time, adult Venturing leaders cannot ignore the risks America's adolescents face to their personal safety. Hello, I'm Jerry Arnold. And I'm Priscilla Evans. We're here to discuss the personal safety needs of young men and women participating in the Venturing program of the Boy Scouts of America. These safety concerns are addressed as part of the BSA's Youth Protection Strategies. On behalf of the Boy Scouts of America, we want to express our thanks for your participation in this training program. One of the things that you'll appreciate after participating in this training is that many of the risks to the personal safety of teenagers are experienced as a part of the normal process of maturation. The ages 14 through 20 represent a period of major transition, and teenagers experience this transition at different rates. This means that there is a great variation even in teens of the same age. So you adult venturing leaders can expect the members of your crews to have various levels of physical development and social skills. Risk taking is a part of the growing up process. Now taking some risks is a part of the venturing program, but not in the same sense. When venturers are rock climbing, whitewater rafting, or participating in other high adventure activities, there's been preparation and training. That's one of your roles as adult leaders, to anticipate the risks and to help devise strategies for minimizing their impact. But the thrill is still there. Your role as an adult venturing leader for helping teenagers confront the risks of growing up and to devise strategies for ensuring personal safety is similar. Unfortunately, a lot of the risks of growing up involve experimentation with issues like sex, drugs, and other judgment-altering substances. Adult leaders are not likely to be there to provide a safety net. That's why it's important to address some of these issues before they become literally life-threatening situations. One reason that adolescents take risks is because they have a curiosity about adult experiences. It's a way they learn. So what we are going to do today is to discuss some of the transitions that young people of venturing age normally experience. As we mentioned earlier, there is a world of difference between most 14-year-olds and most 20-year-olds. These differences serve as assets to the venturing program, as older adolescents can be powerful role models for their younger peers. Next, we're going to relate these developmental issues to the personal safety concerns of the Venturing Program. After that, we're going to conclude by reviewing youth protection guidelines designed by the BSA to ensure that Venturing crews conduct their programs with the personal safety of the crew members in mind. Perhaps we should offer a word of reassurance to you Venturing leaders. Most teenagers make it through adolescence to adulthood. All of you watching this video did. But if you think back, your teenage years probably involved a certain amount of conflict with your parents and other family members as you asserted your independence. There were things that you did as a teenager that you probably regret doing. And your social skills? Well, just think about some of those dates that you had in high school. That part hadn't gotten any easier. <laughs> there are four areas of transition that have a bearing on the venturing program and the personal safety of crew members. While we're going to discuss each separately, keep in mind all four dynamics are happening at the same time during a teenager's development. The four areas are, first, movement toward independence. Second, future interests and mental ability. The third is social relationships. And finally, the fourth encompasses morals, values, and self-direction. Remember, what we are discussing are normal experiences. Let's look at the first topic, movement towards independence. When young people enter adolescence, they generally do not have their sense of self well established. Consequently, many adolescents measure themselves by the standard of their peer group. They want to belong by wearing the right clothes, listening to the right music, and doing the things that their peers do. By the time that they're 21, however, we expect them to have a pretty good idea about who they are. Getting there often causes conflicts between adolescents and parents or other authority figures. One of the great struggles of adolescence is exerting one's independence. And, as we'll see, the struggle for independence often puts adolescents at a risk of personal harm. Younger teenagers also are more moody than their older counterparts. They can be up one day and down in the dumps the next. They haven't learned to take setbacks in stride. They tend to personalize as well as catastrophize every issue. When they grow older, they'll learn to cope with setbacks as just another part of life. So without belaboring the point, when 14-year-olds become venturers, we should expect some awkwardness, some resistance to authoritarian adults. 
and some self-absorption expressed as worries about how they look and their acceptance by peers. But by the time young men and women are 21 years old, they have a more adult outlook on life, are usually more emotionally stable and comfortable with themselves, able to be independent. The second transitional area is future interests and mental abilities. Consistent with their limited experience, young adolescents are mostly interested in the present with limited thoughts of the future. This can cause problems with cause-effect relationships as young adolescents pursue the interest of the moment without thinking about possible consequences of their actions. By late adolescence, however, we should expect more defined work habits, increased concern about the future, and a desire that the role they play with their lives should make a difference. This next area is social relationships. One of the developmental tasks of adolescence is to learn how to participate as an adult in our society through forming emotional attachments and eventually beginning one's own family. Often this is an uncomfortable process for teenagers and may also be uncomfortable for adults observing and trying to help. Girls usually develop physically sooner than boys, so young coeducational venturing crews might expect that the girls will be past puberty while some of the boys may just be entering puberty. In venturing crews that have a wider age range, adults can expect to see social relationships forming between young men and women with the guys being two or more years older than the girls. Most teenagers are very concerned about whether they are physically attractive to others. Because some of the physical changes they experience cause insecurity, they may be preoccupied about whether they are normal. But by late adolescence, most are capable of experiencing feelings of love and passion and are capable of developing serious relationships. Our fourth and final area of transition during adolescence is morals, values, and self-direction. During this period of life, venturing age young people are expected to develop the ethical foundation that will serve them for the rest of their lives. Certainly, we don't expect a 14-year-old to have the appreciation of cultural and social traditions that we see in a 21-year-old adult, and they don't. Typical early adolescent behavior includes testing limits and frequently involves experimenting with sex and drugs often due to the influence of their peers. Some of this behavior extends into late adolescence. For example, keg parties at college fraternities. Peer groups are powerful forces in the lives of most adolescents, and many do things in the context of a group that they would never consider otherwise. In this section, we've examined four areas of transition that we can expect venturing age youths to pass through. In the next section, we're going to relate these transitional areas to personal safety concerns. A frustrating concern to adults who want to help adolescents with their problems is that adolescents often don't seek the help they need. That's usually because becoming independent is one of the major transitions. So when teenagers have problems, often the last ones they want to know about the problem is their parents. Their parents' knowledge of the problem is a threat to their sense of independence. We talked earlier about the influence that adolescent peers have on each other's behaviors. Teenagers influence each other either positively or negatively in relation to their experimentation with sex, alcohol, and other drugs. The driving force is a teenager's desire to be accepted by a particular in-crowd. When young people lack strong self-images, they're very susceptible to the allure of acceptance conditioned upon doing drugs or engaging in sexual activities. Because less mature adolescents don't have an appreciation of cause-effect relationships, they may not understand the consequences that unacceptable or dangerous behavior may have on their futures. Consequences such as loss of college scholarships or even incarceration for illegal activities. It must be very confusing for teenagers trying to sort out what is moral and immoral behavior. Our society gives a lot of conflicting messages about sex and sexuality. Adolescents need a clear sense of behavioral boundaries when it comes to sexual relationships. Most of us as adults realize that if a teenager follows pop culture, he or she may be left with the impression that sex is an expected outcome of every date, that a teenage male is expected to be aggressive in seeking sex, and that a teenage female in saying no really means maybe. Another source of confusion for teens are the differences in sophistication and experience. The varying levels of sophistication among young people present opportunities for sexual exploitation of less sophisticated teenagers. Older teens and adults may use their sophistication to engage younger teens in sexual activities that legally constitute sexual molestation or acquaintance rape. Often, drugs and alcohol are used to break down the resistance of the victim of such sexual molestation. Again, it's that driving desire of wanting peer acceptance and trying to exert one's independence that are contributing factors to this kind of sexual exploitation. 
We are often tempted to see sexual behavior between adults and youths as initiated by the adult. While I want to make it perfectly clear that the adults must be held responsible for violating boundaries if they indulge in sexual behavior with youths, adolescents are capable of forming crushes or having strong emotional and sexual feelings for adult leaders. Adolescents with crushes can make their feelings painfully apparent to the adult targets of their affection. Adults who must be accountable for making sure that no inappropriate interactions occur. The BSA feels very strongly about keeping the line between adult leader and youth members very clearly drawn. It is not unusual for older venturers to date younger venturers, usually older males dating younger females. And often when venturers turn 21, they wish to continue their association with a crew as an adult leader. If there's a dating relationship between the 21-year-old and a youth member of the crew, the dating relationship must be terminated or the 21-year-old cannot be registered as an adult leader in the program. The term used by the Boy Scouts of America for social relationships between adult and youth members is fraternization. Fraternization is prohibited, simple and straightforward. In this section, we have discussed some of the transitions that venturers experience from 14 through 20 years of age and their relationships to personal safety issues. In the next section, we're going to talk about youth protection guidelines. But before going into specific policies, I'd like to emphasize the importance of your roles as an adult leader in protecting your crew members and in helping your crew members to protect themselves. I want you to know how important you are in the lives of your crew members, helping them to make the transition from childhood to adulthood. First, you serve as a role model. Your crew members are learning from you what it means to be an adult. You set the example. When you demonstrate the values you live by, you will influence the choices that your crew members make in these vital areas. You will earn their respect for sticking to your values, even if your crew members do not always agree. A quick way to lose the respect of your venturing crew is to talk about one set of values and live your life according to another set. Because their relationship with you is voluntary, you may become a mentor for the members of your crew. As such, crew members may be more apt to come to you with their personal problems than they are to go to their parents or some other authority figure. You may also notice changes in behavior that extend for more than a few days. This could be a signal that a teenager is in need of help. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for teenagers, and any talk of suicide should be taken seriously. We discuss that teens often catastrophize situations and may see suicide as a solution. Be particularly concerned if the talk of suicide occurs after another suicide of a teen in the community. It is not uncommon for suicides or attempts at suicide by adolescents to happen in clusters. The following changes in behavior, if extended over a period of more than a few days, could signal depression, stress reactions, or suicidal thoughts. If a member of your crew exhibits any of these for a period of time, you may wish to express your concern to the youth or to the youth's parents. When you express your concerns, make the approach carefully. Describe your observations rather than your suspicions. For example, you might go to the youth and say, I've been concerned about you lately. For the past three weeks, you seem awfully sad, or whatever behavior you've noticed. Then offer your help by saying something like, can I be of help? If you go to the parents, you could say pretty much the same thing. Parents may be able to give you some insight on what the problem may be. Whatever you do, it will be unwise to say something like, I've noticed that your son or daughter is acting strangely. I think he or she is contemplating suicide. Most of us do not have the professional training necessary for such a dire diagnosis. You might, however, ask if they've considered getting professional, medical, or psychological help for their child. Teens have lots of different kinds of problems. Quite often, they just need an adult to act as a sounding board to help identify options for resolving their problems. While it may be easy for you to tell the young person what to do, in most cases, it is better to guide him or her into selecting a course of action. For example, you might use phrases such as, what do you think you should do? Have you considered this? What do you think will happen if you do this? What is the worst that could happen? What do you want to happen? By posing such questions, you can help teens define their problems and arrive at a course of action without assuming the responsibility for their problems. You are being supportive and at the same time teaching them problem-solving skills. Now that we have talked about how you, as an adult venturing leader, may be able to help the teens in your crew, let's go over the youth protection guidelines the Boy Scouts have established as they apply to the venturing program. 
These guidelines, incidentally, are designed to protect both youth members and adult leaders. Adhering to the guidelines increases the confidence of parents, chartered organizations, and other members of the community. Remember, in any case of suspected sexual misconduct in the venturing program, you are required to notify the scout executive of your council as soon as possible. Each scout executive is prepared to offer you guidance and assistance and to file legally mandated reports with the appropriate authorities. Venturing crews require too deep leadership on all trips and outings. This is a minimum requirement and additional supervision may be necessary depending on the nature of the activity and the number of participants. Both male and female adult leaders need to accompany venturing activities that involve both male and female crew members. Sleeping accommodations, latrines, and bathing facilities for males and females should be separate, if possible. When forced to share such facilities, extra care may be necessary to prevent violations of personal privacy. Interaction between adult leaders and crew members that must be private should be conducted out of earshot, but in view of others. Individual meetings between crew officers and adult leaders should occur in public places or in view of others. During venturing trips and outings, adults should not sleep in the same quarters with youth members other than their own children. To the extent possible, adults and crew members should have separate latrines and bathing facilities. Adult leaders should respect the privacy of youth members in situations such as changing into swimming suits or taking showers and intrude only to the extent that the health and safety of the venturers require. Adult leaders also need to protect their own privacy in these situations. Proper attire should be worn for all activities, and skinny dipping is never appropriate as part of a BSA activity. Because of the wide differences in the maturational levels of crew members, we strongly suggest that you maintain an awareness of any social relationships between crew members. Be especially on the lookout for any relationships that involve younger, immature venturers with older, more sophisticated crew members. It is unusual for an older crew member to hang around with a younger member. If it happens, it may be for inappropriate reasons. Most venturing crews engage in physically demanding activities, many of which would be dangerous if proper preparations, training, and practice are not made. In addition, high adventure activities should be conducted under the leadership of qualified, experienced individuals. Proper equipment and safety procedures are required for all activities. Care should be taken to ensure that no crew member is coerced into activities for which he or she is not adequately prepared both physically and mentally. Earlier we mentioned that when in groups, adolescents often do things that individually they wouldn't consider. This can include initiations and hazing activities that can get out of hand and cross the line. Because of this, initiations and hazing are not included in any BSA authorized activity. Also, along the same lines, there are no secret organizations in venturing or in any scouting program. Venturing, as we said earlier, does not permit fraternization between adult leaders and youth members of any age. Relationships of this nature put the adult leader in a compromising position and are bad for the morale of the crew. As all of BSA's programs are, venturing is a values-based program and fraternization violates those values. Let's talk a little bit about disciplinary techniques in the venturing program. Even if spanking were age appropriate for venturers, BSA's policies would not allow it. Parents may have a legal right to spank their children, but that right may not extend to others. Besides, we think that any disciplinary measures used in any scouting related program should be constructive and positive. If unruly behavior persists or interferes with the program, the members who are acting up should be suspended from the program until they can behave properly. Many venturing crews develop their own codes of conduct. In this way, they set their own boundaries for acceptable behavior. Crew members are more likely to comply with codes of conduct they develop than obey rules set by others. This prevents most problematic behavior, and in this same spirit, most disciplinary action may be taken by other crew members. Some crews have review boards to formally adjudicate charges of misconduct against crew members. By relying on self-made codes of conduct and internal disciplinary processes, venturers learn responsibility and adults don't become the bad guys for disciplining. Adult venturing leaders need to monitor the actions of disciplinary boards and ensure that any discipline falls within the guidelines and spirit of the venturing program. In this section, we have reviewed the guidelines that the Boy Scouts of America developed to prevent violations of the personal safety of venturers and to protect venturing's adult leaders from false allegations of misconduct. To conclude this video, we would like to emphasize the positive outcomes of the venturing program. As adult venturing leaders, you should be aware of the transitions that your crew members are going through. 
These changes are part of the normal process of maturation. But merely because they are normal doesn't mean that they won't be troublesome for your venture and crew members. As we discussed, the trial and error experimentation through which adolescents gain life skills may place them at risk. Indeed, many of the problems faced by adolescents during their maturation present some ethical dilemmas. One of the program methods of venturing is helping crew members make ethical decisions. As a part of the youth protection strategies of the BSA, we urge you to use the personal safety program developed for the venturing crew members. This video-based program presents different youth protection scenarios. The personal safety issues covered are internet safety and stalking, peer sexual harassment, and acquaintance rape. Each of these is to be discussed by your crew members. After their discussion, a videotape discussion covers the points that we wanted to be sure were made. We cannot begin to depict every problem of adolescence on videotape. These four are designed to provide a context for dealing with other issues of boundary violations and inappropriate relationships. The venturing program is designed to assist crew members in making the transition between childhood and adulthood. It is a values-based program that helps young adults build the ethical foundations on which they can build relationships for the rest of their lives. You have a responsibility to ensure that youth protection guidelines are implemented in your crew's program and that activities are conducted with due regard for the personal safety of the crew's members. As an adult leader for the Venturing Program, you have the opportunity to be a mentor to the youth in your crew, to help them identify behavioral boundaries, to help each crew member develop a strong sense of self. You are a very important person in the life of each of the members of your crew. Your good judgment combined with what you've learned today and your crew's enthusiasm hold the promise for many exciting Venturing adventures. Let's call it Responsible Adventure. You and your crews can make it happen.